All right, in this tutorial, we are going to cover finite element analysis. Uh, we're going to use a plugin called Millipede, developed by Panos Maglatos, uh, and it is downloadable from his website, salampan.eu. And in combination with that plugin, we're going to use Galapagos, which is now native to Grasshopper, and uh, use that for uh, evolutionary optimization of, uh, of a problem that we're going to create here in, in Rhino. So what we have here are two surfaces uh, from a previous model. Um, these surfaces represent a roof structure. Additionally, we have these two blue uh, support regions, and these are going to represent just uh, fixed supported areas of this roof. And the problem that we're going to want to optimize is the introduction of this light blue column um, or an additional support region. And that can float anywhere within this boundary and to find the optimal x and y position for that column. OK, so let's open up Grasshopper. And here's a file I have saved. Uh, it's relatively simple, um, nothing too out of the ordinary, uh, but let's just walk through it. Um, going to hide these surfaces. Um, first, let me just show you what uh, is introduced into the model. Um, we have first these surfaces here, which are just brought in as, as boundary representations and then convert it into meshes. Um, one thing, I adjusted the settings uh, for, the, for the mesh. Uh, if you right click here and s uh, set mesh options, I just gave it, uh, I adjusted the minimum edge length and maximum edge length uh, just to make sure that there was a high enough resolution. Uh, by default, it's set to one, but I just lowered lowered that to be between 0.1 and 0.5. The units that we're using here are meters. Uh, it's necessary to be working in meters uh, in order to use millipede. So make sure that you've converted your model uh, from millimeters into meters if you have not done so already. Uh, and uh, one thing to explain, uh, after we convert this to a mesh, another reason to, to convert it in a relatively higher resolution um, is, is that that will affect the accuracy of, of the simulation here. Uh, we can preview that by checking the mesh edges. Um, and if we turn that on, we can see how this mesh is subdivided. Uh, so this is based on the minimum and maximum edge length that we just set here in the mesh options. If we don't have enough resolution, then, then we're not going to be able to, to visualize our simulation. Okay, moving on. Uh, then next up, we have the support regions. Um, we have two different s uh, sets of support regions. This first set here, which consists of these two blue boxes on either side, and this is just this is a um, support region definition uh, stock material and it's fixed in all dimensions. So this is just a, um, a series of six booleans that are all set to true. And so that's our support regions on either side. Then we introduce another support region, which is this floating column that we here. This one we've done a bit differently because we're going to want to uh, move this around. We've created a, a move object and a vector consisting of x and y, uh, that we can move these sliders. Uh, and we'll need to use sliders in order to work with Galapagos. Uh, you'll see this pop-up window, which is a, uh, a method used by Millipede. Uh, don't worry about that now. So let's put this back to zero. And then we've introduced all three of these millipede components into the millipede finite element system. Um, so all of these objects that are using their, their own kind of graphic language um, and are all accessible through the millipede drop-down window. 
Um, these are all, all working within the finite element system in this definition. And this solver, the, uh, the finite element solver, here just needs to take into this input m all model components. Uh, so that consists of geometry, properties, regions, etc. So in our case, we need to input uh, this here, the finite element mesh, uh, which we generated with this mesh object. Uh, and the properties for that, it also needs material. We've used steel, but we can change this to another material from the stock. Um, right click and, and set to another material um, if need be. And then also a thickness. Um, it's represented as a surface by necessity when we input it. Um, otherwise, it would get confusing. Uh, so this is just one surface becoming a mesh. But in actuality, of course, that that would be working as a slab that would have thickness. Here we've set it to 0.245. Of course, we can change that as well. Then for our supports, we only need the boundary representation and the uh, support type. And same here. All three of these to the uh, just plug into the M component and the rest we don't need to worry about now. Um, then we take from the, the finite element system, this, this is what uh, gathers everything into one system, and then this is the component, the FE solver, the finite element solver, which will actually produce all the calculations and give us an output of the deflection. Um, <coughs> so this is quite straightforward, FE goes to FE. And what's important here, you may have noticed that uh, this seems to be inaccurate if we hide these surfaces. Uh, this is completely one shade of blue, um, and that doesn't seem like that would be really the case. The reason is that we haven't, um, we haven't put any kind of loading into this file. So there's no, uh, there's supports, but there's no point loads, there's no area loads. Um, and we're, we're not going to add explicit loads, but what we can do for the sake of simplicity is to, to simply uh, give the surfaces here uh, self-weight. So you can see here, this is SWC, self-weight coefficient. And that's a value ranging from 0 to 1. Um, and so this is calculating the weight of a steel slab at 0.245 meters thick. Uh, and so if we go all the way to 1, that will consider all of the weight of that slab. So now all of a sudden we get a more uh, convincing output. Okay. And next up we should check uh, what we're actually seeing. Um, this is very important when, when running these kinds of analyses that uh, that we're getting colored outputs, of course, but we need to understand what that actually means and, and how it's useful. Um, and, and not to trust the system completely because it's, of course, subject to both machine errors and human errors. So to make sure to, to double check and really take care and, and from, a, from your own uh, personal point of view, just to check whether or not this seems to make sense. Um, so what we have here, for the purposes of visualization, uh, we can drag our FE model output to the mesh visualization component, and that will uh, that will give us this colored model. If we turn off the preview, we don't see it anymore. But we can also, when we right click, specify what kind of information is outputting in this rainbow gradient. Um, so in this case, because we're going to uh, be creating a, a function that will optimize in terms of deflection, which is the value coming from, from here, let's go ahead and convert this mesh visualization to deflection. Okay, so that's a bit more believable for deflection. And here we have a, a preview that we can see the, the effect that the, the maximum deflection would have um, you know, in 
hyperbole exaggeration, but just to preview, we can slide that down. And this is what would happen uh, under maximum deflection. Uh, and then up here, we're not going to get into this too much, but uh, we can visualize stress lines as well, just with the standard preview uh, component. Uh, so we'll, we'll come back to that a bit. Okay. So, so that's about all we need to know to, to set this up. Um, again, with the self-weight coefficient set to 1, so that we actually have some weight to check. And, uh, and then what we're going to be manipulating in Galapagos are these x and y components, uh, just these, these ranges of values to find the optimal position for this column. So another reason why we've adjusted the uh, mesh settings here is because when the finite element method calculates the, the surface or calculates the uh, stresses on the surface, it's not actually calculating the surface itself per se, it's actually calculating mesh nodes as represented here in this graphic. Um, and so these uh, boundary regions here, these uh, dark blue boundary regions, the mesh nodes that are contained within those regions are considered um, a fixed, fixed mesh nodes, whereas the ones that are not contained within these regions, uh, the ones here, are, are considered flexible and subject to deflection. Uh, and so when we start to bring this column in and test it in different positions within this, um, w within this system, certain uh, mesh nodes will become all of a sudden inside the column, and that will be how the, the system is evaluated, uh, whether or not these mesh nodes are contained within these volumes or not. Uh, so again, the higher the resolution of the mesh, the more accurate it will be, but it will significantly slow down the processing time. Okay, I think that's about all that we need to cover. Uh, let's go to Galapagos, um, which is an evolutionary solver, which means it will go through various generations, choosing the most fit of each generation, and then uh, cross-fertilizing between those most fit to move on to the next generation ultimately, arriving at a solution that's not necessarily the uh, most fit of all possible solutions, but um, will be certainly more uh, suitable, more fit than, uh, than what we would have been able to come up with without the evolutionary tool. Um, and so what we're analyzing here, we have two components to Galapagos. We have a genome and we have fitness. Uh, the genome is uh, calling on these two sliders here, um, the X and Y component to, uh, to the motion for this new column. Um, and we, we set that just by right-clicking and saying selected sliders. And then we need to choose one single uh, number uh, to represent the fitness. So this is a, a single number that we're either trying to minimize or maximize. In this case, this number will be straight from the, uh, the finite element solver component, and it will be the maximum deflection for the system. Uh, as it is now, it's uh, 0 0.001 uh, in terms of meters still. We can just visualize it through a note here and uh, plug that into a black hexagon number component. Uh, so then we drag and we make this connection here. Then double click on the Galapagos editor. Make sure this is set to minimize. And then we can go to the solver. Click here to see every single um, genomes in the Rhino viewport. And we can start the solver here. So after a while, uh, Galapagos cannot find a smaller number than, uh, than we have here, 0 0.093 millimeters of deflection. So we can click on any of these. They're all just minor variations of each other and reinstate that value. Uh, but uh, we can go back to our, our volume uh, representing the, the column, uh, and we can bake that. All right, thank you.